Jaden versus Yubel. Yubel wants to mash every single dimension together into one using super polymerization. Jaden, obviously, wants to stop that. Today we have two back to back duels to analyze Jaden versus Yubel possessing Jesse, and Jaden versus Yubel in the final duel. So, without further ado, let's jump into the duel. The duel begins and Jesse goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Advanced Crystal Beast Cobalt Eagle, Rainbow Dark Dragon, Advanced Dark, Crystal Release, M Force, and Last Trick. He starts by playing his field spell Advanced Dark. Now, while this card remains on the field, anytime he would take battle damage, he can instead send an Advanced Crystal Beast from his deck to the grave to make the damage zero. He summons his Advanced Crystal Beast Cobalt Eagle to the field and ends his turn. Right off the bat, you'll notice that some of the other cards that he had in his hand probably would have been worth setting face down. M-Force is a quick play spell. If he flips that up, he can increase the attack of one of his monsters by 500 and do piercing battle damage. That's a cool effect. Or even better, Last Trick, the ability to steal an opponent's spell card before it goes into the grave. That sounds kind of cool. Why didn't he set these cards face down? It turns out that Jessie, Ubel, ultimately wants to get her hands on super polymerization. And so Ubel purposefully holds on to Last Trick throughout the entire duel, waiting for the opportunity to steal super polymerization. But for now, it's Jaden's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Elemental Hero Bastinatrix, Elemental Hero Neos, Polymerization, Neo Space Road, and Common Sacrifice. Despite hesitating due to his fear of fusion, Jaden overcomes this and plays Polymerization to fuse his Avion and Bastinatrix to make Flame Wingman. Jaden attacks Cobalt Eagle. It is destroyed. However, Jesse sends an advanced Crystal Beast, Emerald Tortoise, from his deck to the grave to nullify the damage thanks to his field spell. Cobalt Eagle's effect then kicks in, which causes it to be placed in the Spell and Trap Zone instead of going to the graveyard. And since this monster didn't go to the grave, Flame Wingman's effect doesn't trigger, so no additional damage is done. Jaden ends his turn by setting Common Sacrifice face down. It's Jesse's turn and he draws Advanced Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus. He summons it to the field and activates its effect to place one Advanced Crystal Beast from his deck into his Spell and Trap Zone. He chooses Ruby Carbuncle. When Ruby Carbuncle is placed in the Spell and Trap Zone, its effect activates, which allows itself to special summon itself to the field. Then Ruby Carbuncle's second effect kicks in. When it is special summoned to the field, it special summons as many other Crystal Beasts in the Spell and Trap Zones as well. Jesse then activates his Crystal Release, equipping it to Sapphire Pegasus. This increases its attack by 800. Now, with enough attack, Sapphire Pegasus destroys Flame Wingman. Jaden takes the first damage of the duel. With no monsters left, Cobalt Eagle and Ruby Carbuncle attack directly. Jesse ends his turn. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Neospatian Grand Mole. He summons it to the field. Now, since it's Jaden's main phase and Jesse controls three monsters, Jaden has the requirements to activate his face down trap common sacrifice. With its effect, he can send the two weakest monsters on Jesse's side of the field to the grave, and this will allow him to special summon one level 7 or higher monster in his hand. Cobalt Eagle and Ruby Carbuncle go to the grave, and Elemental Hero Neos is summoned to the field. Jaden enters his battle phase and uses Grand Mol to attack Sapphire Pegasus. Due to Grand Mol's effect, both monsters are bounced back to the hand before damage. However, since Crystal Release was equipped to Pegasus, it is sent to the grave. Its second effect triggers, placing another advanced Crystal Beast in the Spell and Trap Zone. This time, Amber Mammoth. With no monsters left, Jaden attacks directly with Elemental Hero Neos. Jaden sets Neo Space Road face down and ends his turn. It's Jesse's turn and he draws Crystal Beacon. He resummons Sapphire Pegasus and uses its effect to place Amethyst Cat into his Spell and Trap Zone. Jesse then activates Crystal Beacon. Since he has two Crystal Beasts in his Spell and Trap Zone, he can special summon one Crystal Beast from his deck. He chooses Topaz Tiger. Now, since there are seven different advanced Crystal Beast monsters on Jesse's field and in his grave, he is able to summon his Rainbow Dark Dragon. Unfortunately, due to Rainbow Dark Dragon's effect, it cannot use any of its effects the turn it is summoned. And so, Jesse enters his battle phase and attacks Neos. It is destroyed. Jesse then attempts to go for game by attacking with his two other Crystal Beasts. 
further Jaden Place is set Neos Space Road. Since Neos was destroyed by battle, he can immediately end the battle phase and draw a card. The card Jaden draws is instant Neos Space. Jesse ends his turn by setting M Force face down. It's back to Jaden, and he draws Convert Contact. Jaden activates it. This allows him to send Neospatian Grand Mole from his hand and Neospatian Flare Scarab from his deck to the graveyard to allow him to draw two new cards. He draws Elemental Hero Bubble Man and the Flute of Summoning Karibo. Jaden summons Bubble Man, and since there are no other cards on the field when it was summoned, Bubble Man's effect allows him to draw two new cards. He draws Cocoon Party and Contact. Jaden sets the Flute of Summoning Karibo face down and ends his turn. It's Jesse's turn, and he draws something. This card is never revealed, never played, and ultimately doesn't really matter in the duel. So let's just say it's Gem Burst. Jesse immediately enters his battle phase and attacks Bubble Man with Sapphire Pegasus. It is destroyed. He then attempts to go for game by attacking directly with Rainbow Dark Dragon. However, Jaden plays the Flute of Summoning Karibo to special summon Wing Karibo in defense. A replay occurs, and Jesse uses Rainbow Dark Dragon to destroy Wing Karibo. Wing Karibo's effect then kicks in. Since it was destroyed, Jaden will take no further battle damage this turn. Following this, we get a little bit of out of duel stuff. Wing Karibo's light allows the Crystal Beast to be purified for a moment so they can commune with uh, Jaden. They basically say to free us, you need to get rid of the advanced dark field spell. And also if you want to save Jesse, you need to purify Rainbow Dragon. New Bell is not very impressed about his monsters communing with Jaden. So he decides to punish them by forcing Topaz Tiger to attack despite no damage being dealt. Gribo's effect backfires on the monster, hurting it. Jesse ends his turn. And it is here that Jesse missed two opportunities for victory. But how I hear you cry. Well, let's get into it. First, Jesse had his M Force quick play spell face down. Its effect, if activated, lets him select one face up Crystal Beast monster he controls, it gains 500 attack. And then if it attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage. So that would have meant that when Sapphire Pegasus attacked the defense position Bubble Man, if Jesse would have waited till the damage step, flip this card up, increase its attack by 500, deal piercing battle damage, 2300 attack minus 1200 defense, that equals 1100 points of damage. Jaden's got like 300 life points left. That would have been game. But let's just say he missed this. Oh no, I've, I've made a mistake. I could have done that. Wait a minute. I've got a second chance of doing this. Now, when Jaden summons his Wing Karibo, Jesse could have simply cancelled his attack with Rainbow Dark Dragon and instead attacked with Topaz Tiger. Flip up the M Force. Karibo's effect doesn't stop damage until after it's destroyed, so damage calculation would still be applied. Jesse would have won again. So the question then becomes, was this a huge misplay? Well, Yuvel already established that she wanted both duelists to give their all and not hold back. So by that logic, yeah, Yuvel made a mistake. However, I'm going to argue against that. Keep in mind that Yuvel is a villain. Villains tend to be big liars. What could Yuvel gain from forcing Jaden to go all out? Oh yes, the activation of super polymerization and the requirements she needs to obtain said super polymerization. So yeah, there you go. Yubel could have won here, but she chose not to. It's Jaden's turn and he draws O Oversoul. He activates Cocoon Party. This lets him special summon Chrysalis monsters from his deck for each Neospatian in his grave with a different name. Since there are two in his grave, Grand Mole and Flare Scarab, he summons his Chrysalis Dolphin and Chrysalis Chicky. Following this, he plays Contact. This sends all Chrysalis monsters on the field to the grave and then special summons their upgraded forms from his deck. He summons Neospatian Aqua Dolphin and Neospatian Air Hummingbird. Jaden then activates Air Hummingbird's effect, gaining 500 life points for every card in Jesse's hand. Since he has two, he gains 1,000 life points. Jaden then activates O Oversoul to special summon Elemental Hero Neos from his grave. He Contact fuses his Neos, Aqua Dolphin and Air Hummingbird together to summon Elemental Hero Storm Neos. Immediately he activates Storm Neos' effect, which destroys all spells and traps on the field. Advanced Dark and M Force are sent to the grave. Now, since Advanced Dark is no longer on the field, all of the Advanced Crystal Beasts on the field are sent to the grave. Jaden activates Instant Neo Space and equips it to Storm Neos, making it so that it can stay on the field during the end phase. 
Unable to attack over Rainbow Dark Dragon, Jaden ends his turn. Wait a minute, Jaden couldn't get over Rainbow Dark Dragon? Well, why not just summon Storm Neos into defense? Could have saved yourself some life points, but it gets attacked next turn. I guess it's not a big deal really though, is it? Because he knows he has enough life points to tank the attack. Oh, but wait, it's actually a huge deal. Ubel is ultimately going to play a card that deals a thousand damage to both players' life points. Had Jaden summoned his Storm Neos into defense this turn, he would have saved enough life points so that if Ubel did choose to use that card later in the duel, it wouldn't have killed him. In fact, it would only would have killed Ubel. So Jaden would have won the duel. You could say then, oh, well, probably Ubel wouldn't have activated that card. Well, the thing is, Jaden's going to get out Rainbow Neos, and he would have won. So, yeah, huge misplay, Jaden. You just cost yourself the duel. It's Jesse's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws Thousand Buster. Since there are no Crystal Beasts on the field, Jesse is unable to use Rainbow Dark Dragon's effect to boost its attack. Regardless, he attacks and destroys Storm Neos. As instant Neos space was equipped to it and was sent to the grave, Jaden can special summon Neos from his deck. Jesse ends his turn by setting his last trick and Thousand Buster traps face down. It's Jaden's turn and the final turn of the duel. He draws Fifth Hope. He activates it immediately, allowing him to return five elemental heroes in his grave back into his deck to draw two new cards. He draws Contact Out, and super polymerization. Jaden activates it by discarding his contact out. Now he can fuse using both sides of the field. And on top of that, super polymerization and the monster that is summoned cannot be responded to by monster, spell, and trap effects. Jaden fuses his elemental hero Neos with Jesse's rainbow dark dragon. He summons out rainbow Neos, the personification of Jaden and Jesse's friendship. This act purifies Rainbow Dragon and purges Ubel from Jesse's body. Before Jaden can attack for game, Ubel reveals one final move. You see, before Jaden played Super Polymerization, she had activated her trap, Last Trick, which causes the next spell to be used to be added to her hand instead of going to the grave. Due to this, she received Super Polymerization. Now with Super Poly in hand and her goal complete, she plays her second trap, Thousand Buster. By paying 1,000 life points, she can inflict 1,000 damage to both players. Both players' life points drop to zero, and the duel ends in a draw. For me, this duel is pretty simple. Yes, Jaden was about to win in the final turn. However, Ubel was in control of the majority of this duel, had set all this up so that she could get Super Polymerization in the end game, had an opportunity to win in the middle, and Jaden did have an opportunity to win, but he messed it up. So, Ubel Jesse definitively won this duel. However, we have one final duel to go over. The final duel begins, and Ubel goes first. She draws, and her opening hand consists of Samsara Lotus, Spell Chronicle, Sinister Seeds, Regenerating Rose, and two Mysterious Cards. Get used to Mysterious Cards, because that's going to be a running theme throughout this duel. She's going to draw so many cards, I'm going to say to you, I don't know what it is, because she'll never use it, never activate it, never discard it, never do anything with it. But we'll theorize why a little bit later. Ubel starts by summoning Samsara Lotus into attack. She sets Sinister Seeds face down and then activates the continuous spell, Spell Chronicle. Now, by banishing five cards from her deck, each time Jaden activates a spell card, Spell Chronicle will gain one counter, with a maximum of two at a time. During her main phases, she can remove two counters from the card to add one of those banished cards to her hand. However, Jaden is the one who picks. The five cards she banishes are Zero Sprite, Fiend Rose, Mystical Space Typhoon, Grinder Golem, and Super Polymerization. Ubel ends her turn. It's Jaden's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Elemental Hero Bastinatrix, Nex, Polymerization, Defusion, and Spark Blaster. He activates Polymerization. As he does, Spell Chronicle gets its first counter. He fuses his Bastinatrix and Avion together to make Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. Jaden attacks Samsara Lotus. As it is destroyed, Ubel activates her Sinister Seeds. Now, by reducing the damage from the attack by multiples of 1000, she can convert that damage into Sinister Seed tokens for every 1000 damage she would have took. Since the damage was 2100, 2000 damage is converted into two tokens, and the remaining 100 
is actually dealt as damage. Flame Wingman's effect does activate, however, since Samsara Lotus had zero attack and defense, it dealt no damage. Jaden sets his defusion face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws something. This card is never revealed, never shown, and never played. Oh well. Yubel sacrifices her two Sinister Seed tokens to summon a Regenerating Rose. Yubel enters her battle phase and attacks Wingman. The effect of Regenerating Rose activates, which allows it to match the attack of any attack position monster it battles with. Jaden retaliates by using his set Defusion. This gives Yubel the second counter for Spell Chronicle. Flame Wingman is returned back to the extra deck and Avion and Bastinatrix are summoned back to the field into defense. Since Regenerating Rose can only gain attack from attack position monsters, she is forced to end the battle phase. Over with two counters on Spell Chronicle, Yubel removes them both to force Jaden to add one of the cards to her hand. Jaden chooses Zero Sprite. Yubel ends her turn. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Elemental Hero Sparkman. Jaden summons Sparkman and then equips Spark Blaster to it. Now he can change the battle position of a monster on Yubel's side of the field. Jaden targets Regenerating Rose and switches it to defense. Now unable to protect itself, Jaden attacks and destroys Regenerating Rose with Sparkman. It is destroyed, however, as it is, its second effect kicks in, special summoning two Regenerating Rose tokens to the field. Jaden ends his turn. It's back to Yubel, and she draws herself. You bell. She sets Zero Sprite face down and then sacrifices her two Regenerating Rose tokens to summon You Bell. She enters her battle phase and attacks Sparkman. Due to You Bell's effect, she cannot be destroyed by battle. As well, Jaden takes all damage from battles involving You Bell. And so, the 1600 damage You Bell would have took is reflected back to Jaden instead. You Bell ends her turn. As she does, she activates the effect of Samsara Lotus in the grave, which is during each of her end phases, it can be special summoned from the grave. However, if it stays on the field, then during her next standby phase, she will receive 1000 damage. However, this detrimental effect will never come to pass, as she has to use Yubel's maintenance costs. You see, during the end phases, Yubel must tribute one monster or Yubel is destroyed. With Samsara Lotus tributed, Yubel stays on the field. It's Jaden's turn and he draws Hero Barrier. With little options, he switches his Sparkman into defense and sets Hero Barrier face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn and she draws Hate Buster. Yubel sets it face down straight away and then attacks Sparkman with Yubel. Jaden plays his set Hero Barrier to negate the attack. However, Yubel plays her trap, Zero Sprite. Due to this card's effect, it can only be equipped to a zero attack monster. And when it does, that monster can attack twice. Yubel attacks again, dealing 1400 damage back at Jaden. Yubel ends her turn, resummons Samsara Lotus, tributes it for Yubel to stay on the field. It's Jaden's turn and a big moment, as he embraces his gentle darkness and awakens the Supreme King's power. He uses its power to draw Neo Space Wave. He activates it. Now reading this card's effect does make my brain hurt a little bit, but ultimately Jaden's gonna cheat using this card, to the best of my knowledge. If I get this wrong, let me know in the comments, but my interpretation of this effect, this is how Jaden cheats here. Neo Space Wave. Activate only when the number of Neospatian monsters in your deck is greater than the number of monsters you control. Send all monsters you control to the graveyard. Then, special summon Neospatian monsters from your deck with attack equal to half of the attack of the monsters sent to the graveyard by this effect. So this effect means one of two things. Jaden can summon three monsters from his deck whose attacks are equal to half the attack of each of the individual Elemental heroes he sent to the grave, or the three monsters summons combined attack must be half the combined attack of the three monsters Jaden sent to the grave. Are you following me? Okay, so let's look at this. He sends Bastinatrix with 1200 attack, Sparkman with 1600 attack, and Avion with 1000 attack. Combined, this is 3800 attack. He summons in their place. Aqua Dolphin, which is half the attack of Bastinatrix, Hummingbird, which is half the attack of Sparkman, and Glomoss, which has 300 attack. 
which is not half of Avion. Together, these three monsters' attacks add up to 1700, which again is not half of 3800. The problematic monster here is Glomox. It's 200 attack points up, meeting the criteria. So, what's up with this? Is Jaden cheating? Yes, and sort of no. I know where that 200 attack points is. It's going to come from the next card that Jaden is about to activate. Because of next, he will upgrade his Glow Moss into Twinkle Moss. And what is Twinkle Moss's attack? 500. Exactly half of Avion's. So this is like a weird thing. It feels as if Twinkle Moss should have been a main deck monster. I don't know if there's like a, a manga reason for this or something. They just didn't translate very well. But to the best of my knowledge, Jaden uses this effect wrong. It's technically illegal play. Illegal play Jaden. There you go. Anyway, Spell Chronicle gets another counter. Jaden activates next by tributing Glow Moss to summon his fusion monster, Neospatian Twinkle Moss. Jaden activates the effect of Air Hummingbird, gaining 500 life points for every card in Yubel's hand. She has three, so Jaden gains 1500 life points. Jaden enters his battle phase and attacks Yubel with Twinkle Moss. Its effect kicks in. When it attacks, Jaden can draw one card and then reveal it. Depending on the type of card it is, will result in one of three effects. Monster, the battle phase ends. Spell, the attack becomes a direct attack. Trap, Twinkle Moss is changed to defense. Jaden draws and reveals Space Gift, a spell. And so the attack becomes direct. Jaden ends his battle phase and then activates Space Gift. This allows him to draw one new card for every Neospatian he has. Since he has three, he draws three cards. The cards drawn are Spiritual Fusion, Arms Hole, and Neo Signal. Note that since Spell Chronicle had two counters, when Jaden activated his third spell, it didn't get another counter because it has a hard limit of two at a time. So, clever play by Jaden. Jaden sets Neo Signal face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws Zero Hole. She removes two counters from Spell Chronicle to add another card. Jaden chooses Fiend Rose to be added to her hand. Yubel enters her battle phase and attacks Aqua Dolphin twice. Yubel sets Zero Hole and Fiend Rose face down and ends her turn. As she does, Samsara Lotus is summoned and then tributed for Yubel. It's Jaden's turn and he draws Card Ejector. He activates the effect of Air Hummingbird to gain 1500 life points again. He then summons Card Ejector and activates its effect to banish one card in the opponent's grave. He plans to remove Samsara Lotus, but Yubel activates Zero Hole, which negates the effect and then destroys Card Ejector. Despite this, since a monster was destroyed, Jaden is able to activate his set Neo Signal. This allows him to special summon a Neo Spatian from his deck. He summons Grand Mole. Jaden then enters his battle phase. He attacks Yubel with Grand Mole, intending to return both back into the hand. However, Yubel counters with Hate Buster. This destroys both monsters and causes Jaden to take damage equal to Grand Mole. Despite the damage, Jaden believes, well, at least Yubel is dealt with. However, the final effect of Yubel kicks in. Since she was destroyed by an effect other than her own, she special summons from her hand, deck, or grave her upgraded form, Yubel Terra Incarnate. This version of Yubel is identical in effect, except it no longer has a maintenance cost. Instead, during the end phases, she destroys all other monsters on her side of the field. And for every other monster she destroys, she can destroy one of Jaden monsters too. Jaden unflinchingly attacks the upgraded Yubel with Twinkle Moss, drawing again for its effect. However, this time he gets a monster, Elemental Hero Prisma. Due to this, the battle phase immediately ends. Jaden sets his arms whole face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws another brick. Yubel immediately enters her battle phase and attacks Aqua Dolphin. The damage is reflected back at Jaden. Yubel ends her turn, and as she does, Samsara Lotus returns to the field. Yubel Terror Incarnate's effect kicks in, destroying all other monsters, which destroys Samsara Lotus. Since a card was destroyed, she can also destroy now one of Jaden's cards. She chooses Air Hummingbird. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws polymerization. He sacrifices his Aqua Dolphin to summon Elemental Hero Prisma, putting it into defense. This seems like a risky move at first, as Prisma is essential for Jaden's ultimate goal of getting out Rainbow Neos. However, he does something quite clever. He enters his battle phase and attacks Yubel with Twinkle Moss. Its effect activates again, allowing Jaden to draw another card, 
which is Fake Hero, a spell, so Twinkle Mask can attack directly. You see, by doing this maneuver, it provokes you Bell. She was already hating on Air Hummingbird for gaining life points for Jaden, so now this monster that's attacking her directly and giving cards to Jaden, she's like, you, you're next. It's Yubel's turn and she draws another brick. Yubel enters her battle phase and attacks Prisma. During the end phase, Samsara returns and yet again is destroyed by Yubel's effect. Yubel chooses Twinkle Moss to be destroyed. It's Jaden's turn and he draws Elemental Hero Neos. Jaden activates Fake Hero, special summoning Neos from his hand. This gives Spell Chronicle another counter. He then activates Prisma's effect. He can send any fusion material from his deck to the grave to make Prisma become that monster. Jaden sends Rainbow Dragon. Jaden plays Polymerization, giving Spell Chronicle its second counter. He fuses his Neos with Rainbow Dragon to make Rainbow Neos. He activates Rainbow Neos' third effect. By sending the top card of his deck to the grave, he can shuffle every card in Yubel's grave back into a deck. Jaden activates his set Arms Hole. Now by milling the top card of his deck, he can add any equipped spell from his deck to his hand. However, he can't normal summon. He adds Rainbow Veil to his hand and equips it to Rainbow Neos. Now with Rainbow Veil equipped to it, any monster Neos battles has its effects negated. And so, Jaden attacks Yubel, attempting to go for gain. However, Yubel activates her set, Fiend Rose. With it equipped to Yubel, she cannot be destroyed by battle, and takes no battle damage from battles involving it. And so, Yubel survives the fight. Jaden ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws another brick. Yubel removes two counters from Spell Chronicle to add another card. This time, Jaden chooses Mystical Space Typhoon, which might seem like an odd choice as she immediately activates it to destroy Rainbow Veil. However, obviously, he can't give her Super Polymerization and Grinder Golem. Yubel will get two tokens. End phase, pop both the tokens, destroy both the monsters on Jaden's field. Yubel attacks Rainbow Neos. However, Jaden banishes the Necro Gardener in his grave to negate the attack. Yubel ends her turn, and since Samsara Lotus is no longer in the grave, Yubel doesn't destroy any of Jaden's monsters. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Fifth Hope. He immediately activates it. This lets him return five Elemental Hero cards in his grave back into his deck to allow him to draw two new cards. Jaden returns Avion, Bastinatrix, Sparkman, Prisma, and Neos, and then draws Elemental Hero Clayman and Alchemy Cycle. Jaden summons Clayman into defense. He then activates the first effect of Rainbow Neos. By sending a monster to the grave, in this case Clayman, he can return all monsters Yubel controls back into the deck. The play is successful. However, Terror Incarnate's final effect kicks in. Since it was removed from the field, Yubel can summon her ultimate form. Yubel, the ultimate nightmare. Ultimate Nightmare has all of the previous effects. However, now if Yubel battles with an opponent's monster, she can inflict damage equal to its attack, and then she destroys it. And not only that, but Yubel's hand size limit now becomes 10. Wait, what? Why does she do that? Literally, it has nothing to do with her effect at all. Well, this is a case of, I think they've just added this effect to be like, oh, wait a minute, Yubel has like a massive hand. You see, in a couple more turns, she's going to surpass the six card hand limit and just keep putting cards in her hand. So I think the only reason that the Ultimate Nightmare has this effect is just so that you won't be like, wait a minute, she's not discarding cards at the end of her turn. It's not like she needs to have so many cards in her hand to use like an ultimate effect or something. So it's weird. It's a weird effect to attack on, but there you go. Jaden ends his turn by setting Alchemy Cycle face down. It's Yubel's turn and she draws Chain Material. She enters her battle phase and attacks Rainbow Neos, attempting to go for game. However, Jaden plays Alchemy Cycle, which reduces Rainbow Neos' attack down to zero and prevents it from being destroyed by battle. However, after the battle, Rainbow Neos is banished. But not only that, but Jaden gets to draw one card. He draws Mirage Tube. Yubel sets Chain Material face down and ends her turn. It's Jaden's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws Elemental Hero Neos. Using the effect of Necro Shade in his grave, Jaden summons Neos without a sacrifice. He then sets his Spiritual Fusion and Mirage Tube face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and the final turn of the duel. She draws and gets another brick. She immediately enters her battle phase and attempts to go for game by attacking Neos. However, Jaden plays Mirage Tube, which negates the attack and then inflicts damage to Yubel, 
equal to Neos' attack. Here we get a dramatic flashback, and Jaden decides to make a hard decision. Due to Mirage Tube, Yubel is able to remove two counters from Spell Chronicle. She asks Jaden to add one of the cards to her hand. She expects him to add Grinder Golem. However, instead, Jaden chooses Super Polymerization. Yubel is shocked, but ultimately continues with her plan. She activates her set chain material, which lets her use her hand, field, deck, and graveyard to perform a fusion summon this turn. She then activates Super Polymerization. By discarding one of the bricks in her hand, Yubel declares she will fuse 12 monsters with 12 different levels to fuse the 12 dimensions together. The monsters she plans to use for the fusion in level order are Grave Squirmer, Giant Germ, Chaos Core, Phantom of Chaos, Dark Summoning Beast, Infernal Incinerator, Maju Gazette, Lava Golem, Infernal Flame Emperor, Raviel Lord of Phantasms, Gate Guardian, and Yubel the Ultimate Nightmare. However, unbeknownst to Yubel, Jaden had activated a card. He had used his set Spiritual Fusion before she had played Super Polymerization. Now, due to its effect, Jaden is the one who chooses the fusion materials. And so, for this summon, Jaden chooses to fuse his and Yubel's soul together. This act unites Yubel with the Supreme King forever, fulfilling her wish, and also preventing the destruction of all existence. The duel ends with no clear victor. Instead, Yubel embraces Jaden. Honestly, an incredible and really memorable finale to a duel. And a great example of self-sacrifice for the greater good. I know I said there was no definitive winner, but we do see in the background Neos fusing with Yubel as well, since Neos is technically Jaden's soul, essentially, right? So if this is the case, then Super Polymerization would most likely have fused Neos with Yubel to make either Elemental Hero Neos Kluger, if it was the real world version, or most likely the anime version Neos Wiseman. And with that monster on the field, Jaden could have attacked directly the game. In my eyes, in the second duel, Jaden is the definitive winner. It really annoyed me how many times that Yubel drew and never did anything with those cards, so it... The only logical reason is because she wanted to unite the 12 dimensions, so she had to play loads of like high level monsters, like Gate Guardian and stuff, that was a bit weird. So perhaps she had a lot of bricks in the deck, basically. I'm gonna say that the seven cards she drew that she never used, these are what they were. Gate Guardian, Suijin, Kazijin, Sanga, Raviel, Uriah, and Herman. Why these? Because, well, we know she has pretty much all of these in her deck. It makes sense if she had them in her hand, she wouldn't be able to summon them because she never had enough materials after she got Yubel out. So yeah, with that, that was Jaden versus Yubel. Let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. And if you like this series, subscribe to the channel. You know what? I'll make more. Catch you later, everyone.